How to Become a Better Wife, Volume 3 How to Become a Better Wife, Volume 3 This is Volume 3 of a 10-volume seminar delivered by the famous motivational speaker and seminar leader Jane John Wanquo. After reading this volume, be sure to purchase the remaining 9 volumes. After God had created man and other creatures, everything was good except for one thing, it is not good for man to be alone Genesis 2 18. A woman was needed in order for everything to be good. Women are the crown of creation. Without a woman, a man is not complete. God created women with special abilities that men lack in order that we might not only be great companions, but a strength for life's journey for men. This book is a manual as well as a motivational book for women who wish to accomplish God's purpose in their lives as wives. If any strength or encouragement is drawn from this book or if you learn something that will make you a better wife, then the purpose of this book would have been achieved. Please visit www.janajohnwonkwo.com Time management Time management involves planning and exercising conscious and consistent control over the amount of time you spend on specific activities with the aim of increasing effectiveness, efficiency or productivity. Why worry about time management? At the end of the day, are you bitter about the things you still have to complete, things that are going to take personal and family time? Are you exhausted from trying to get everything completed and frustrated at all the interruptions that made it impossible to get your to-do list completed? Do you feel ineffective because you cannot accomplish everything with the degree of thoroughness you'd like? Are you losing self-confidence and sleep over the things you aren't able to do? Is your home life suffering because all you ever seem to do is work? These are the reasons you should worry about time management. When it comes right down to it, time gets spent on three basic activities, thinking, talking, and doing. Whether you're a business person, a house husband slash wife, a student, or a retiree your time is consumed by these three activities. Time management skills Poor time management may be related to an inability to prioritize, a lack of planning, procrastination, or a lack of self-control. Time management skills include planning, setting goals, prioritizing tasks, and monitoring how you are actually spending your time. Time management and formal self-assessment One of the first steps in managing your time effectively is to figure out where it goes. Everyone has the same number of hours in a day and yet some people get more done and seem to have leisure time, too. You can get a general idea by downloading the pie graph provided at https colon slash slash www.themes.com slash advice slash the easiest way to see if you're spending your time right. However, to be more accurate and really analyze your time, create a log and fill it in faithfully for a week or two. Keeping an activity log you can keep a log as a journal or daily timetable or you can download a template like http colon slash slash www.mindtools.com slash pages slash article slash worksheet slash activity log download .htm. Or, you can open up spreadsheet and set up, date slash time. Activity description. Duration. Priority of this activity, high, medium, low, none. Write down everything that you do at work, as you do it. Every time you change activities, no matter what or for how short a time, write down the activity, the time of the change, and the duration. Learning from your activity log. After you've logged for a few days, go over your activity log. Analyze percentage of time spent on each activity. Is your time being spent on high, medium or low value jobs? Now it's time to get serious with this data. 1. Eliminate or delegate jobs that aren't even your responsibility. 2. Schedule your most challenging jobs so you are sure to get them done. 3. Minimize the number of times you get sidetracked. Multitasking is all well and good but not if it is distracting you from the tasks you must get done. Turn off the phone. Check emails, messages, texts at specific times, not all day. 4. Do certain jobs at the same time each day or a week. 5. Learn from your log and make changes. Then stick to these changes. How do you want to use your time differently? Having done the log analysis with a client, the counselor discovered that he was quite happy with the way he managed his time. He lived alone and was quite willing to bring homework so that he could be available at all times for staff, customers, and service providers. Before you make changes ask yourself these questions, how would I like to use my time differently at work? How would I choose to use recreational time? How would I use my family and or partner time differently? What other activities, volunteering, mentoring, travel, reading, community organizations, health, education, 
what I like to make time for. Which areas of my life do I feel are being robbed of their rightful time? Time management strategies 1. Get into the habit of carrying a planner. Record activities, thoughts, and conversations and activities for a week. Decide where time was spent unproductively and devise ways to save time, your most precious resource. 2. Begin with the vital tasks. Plan time slots for these before anything else. Be rigid and selfish about using your time to complete these must-do tasks. Avoid distractions. 3. If it is an important task, for example meeting, phone call, time with your kids, dinner with the family, your hour at the gym, it should have an assigned time in your planner. Ink it in. Be prepared not to change these. 4. Avoid to-do lists. These only get longer and longer. Instead, use your appointment book. Make time with yourself to complete high-priority activities. Schedule a beginning and end time. Keep these appointments. Don't reschedule. 5. It is a sad fact that 80% of our most pressing activities occupy 20% of our time. Turn this around. Spend at least half your time on the activities, thoughts, and conversations that are the most productive. 6. Schedule interruptions. You know it's going to happen so budget your time for this. 7. The first half hour or hour of your day should be used for planning out your day's activities. You may do this alone or with an assistant. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail at making effective use of your time. 8. Before every activity, phone call, conversation, transaction, written communication, take a moment to review what you want to attain. Then take a moment or two after the activity to jot down what was accomplished and what still needs to be done. 9. Do not be shy about posting a do not disturb sign or directing your assistant not to forward calls or let anyone into your work area. You can be as creative as you want about the sign but the message should be clear. 10. Acknowledge the fact that you will not be able to get everything done. Make the best use of your time to crack off those important items. 11. When faced with a large number of things to get done, first skim the items. Sort into, vital, import but not immediate, and it can wait. Then deal with each in priority. Finish it and move on. Don't try to multitask. You'll have a pile of started items and nothing done. 12. Stick rigidly to timelines. As you know from warming seats in doctor's offices for hours, once you run behind on one item, you are running late the entire day. When you schedule a meeting put a beginning and end time on it. When you call, announce you have 5 minutes and we're checking in. Take control. Adhere to your schedule. If it is necessary to schedule a follow-up meeting then so be it. Your weekly planner will help you control the time allocated for each task. 13. Check your work environment. Is your traffic pattern haphazard and unproductive? Set up equipment for efficiency. Keep a clean desk and well-organized filing and storage and retrieval systems. Sometimes it is worth the time and money to have a professional declutter your workspace and set it up for maximum efficiency. A fresh pair of eyes sees wasted movements. Wasted movement translates to wasted time. 14. Wherever possible, delegate to others. 15. If you need quiet, go somewhere you can avoid interruptions. 16. Set up templates for regular tasks to save time. Reinventing the wheel is a prime example of poor time management. 17. Learn good decision-making skills. Vacillating and second-guessing waste time and make you a poor manager of time. For a simple but effective decision-making process click on http colon slash slash www.decisionmakingconfidence.com slash six step decision-making process html 18. Learn the gentle art of saying no politely but emphatically. Then learn not to feel guilty for having said it. Most hard-working responsible people hate to disappoint. They are also reluctant to admit they can't do everything. Instead of rationalizing why you had to say no. Show people your schedule. 19. If you have a huge task, break it into bite-sized pieces and spread it over your schedule so it gets done on time. 20. Time management doesn't happen overnight. Start small. Choose two or three time management strategies and put these into practice. Add a new strategy as you become comfortable with the ones you've implemented. Why time management gadgets don't work more and more people are becoming hooked on apps and gizmos that propose to assist with things like time management or scheduling or analyzing how you spend your time. The truth is, time management gadgets and systems don't work. These apps, and gadgets, and systems are designed to manage clock time. Everyone has exactly the same number of clock time hours and minutes as everyone else. Clock time is not the issue. 
The issue is how you spend your time. Gadgets, gizmos and apps cannot make these decisions for you. Time management is about real time. Real time is in your head. Self-sabotaging, self-limiting behavior that defeats time management. If you hear yourself saying any of these things you are defeating time management strategies. One. I have no time. Two. The time isn't right. Three. We're not there yet. Four. We've always done it this way. Five. We can't do that. Six. This seems like so much work. Seven. That's impossible. Eight. This will end in failure. In dealing effectively with time management it is important to know what strengths and challenges you bring to the task. When it comes to tasks like time management people approach the strategies differently because they have different personalities. People who fall into one of the following categories find time management very difficult, the alarmist. Everything happens at crisis level. The alarmist has no time to plan or prioritize or implement time management strategies because he is too busy pouring water on the latest fire. Pick me. This person can't say no. He volunteers or accepts all sorts of assignments. Pick me. Has no time to implement time management strategies because he is overbooked. No thanks. This person is the antithesis of pick me. No thanks. Has it so far in neutral he can't be bothered with time management. His challenge is in task completion. He simply avoids work. Susie social. Susie has wonderfully developed oral communication skills. Unfortunately, she is frequently off task and distracting others with lengthy conversations. Like no thanks. Susie is queen of task avoidance and sees no value in time management strategies. Peter's so perfect. Peter cannot resist crossing all the T's and putting perfect dots over the I's. Tasks must be finished to his standards. Time management strategies are very frustrating for Peter as perfect. Hopefully your personality is not one of these and you will be able to put time management strategies to good use. When time management strategies become second nature to you, you'll wonder how you ever function without them. What's more you will be more productive at work, more well rested, less stressed, more confident and you'll have time to spend with family and friends doing the things you enjoy doing.